Hello, in this session, we will look at how you can launch a uh, Linux EC2 instance. So we'll basically look at how you can create a virtual machine or how you can create a server. Um, in the last session, we basically look at some of the features that your EC2 provides. So we have your, we can make use of your EC2 to launch a server. Uh, we can control the security, the storage, the networking. Uh, all of those things can be um, managed by uh, making use of this ec2 service so once again this is a very important service that we have and uh, we will be covering a lot of topics under this now in this particular session we will be looking at how you can launch a linux ec2 instance now uh, in this particular session we will be going off with uh, the default values the default settings that we have we will be talking about that and in the upcoming sessions we will be talking about each of these settings uh, in detail uh, the different different components that we have once again, before we start off with this session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So if you go to your AWS console, you can navigate to the EC2 service. You can either search for the service named EC2. So you should be able to see, see that service. And if you open up that service, this will uh, give you the dashboard. All right, so the EC2 dashboard. Now this EC2 dashboard will give you a high level uh, overview of uh, you know how many instances you're running how many snapshots you have your load balancers your security group so at a very high level uh, what all components or what all resources that you already have running inside this ec2 service now your ec2 service is uh, uh, region specific okay so uh, in my case the default is us east one which is north virginia and whatever the resources I'll create in North Virginia will be available in North Virginia only. Let's say, for example, I will launch an EC2 instance. Now, if I go, to, if I change my region to Oregon, that instance will not be available for me. So your resources are isolated. Okay. So whatever the resources we create in one region will not be available in another region. So your EC2 service is region specific, whereas your IAM service is a global service. It is not region specific. All right. So keep that in mind. Uh, so here. You should be able to see the EC2 dashboard, which gives you an overview. So here you can see the availability zones that you have. So in North Virginia, we have six availability zones. So based on the regions that you select, you'll have uh, a minimum of three availability zones and you can have more than three, but the minimum you'll have is three. So in case of North Virginia, we have six availability zones. That's the service health, uh, any maintenance, any scheduled events, all that information will be available within this dashboard. Now, if you go to this uh, global view, now if you want to have a um, global view of your EC2 as to, you know, across the regions, how many instances you are running, how many regions you are using, that information will be available within this global view. So this is, you know, across all the regions that we have. So uh, these are all the regions that I'm currently uh, using and this is loading. It's a little slow for me, but here ideally I sh it will show me if I have any uh, instances, if I'm running in any of these uh, uh, regions, the VPCs, the subnets, all this information will be available for me. So it's a global view across all the regions, how many instances you have running, that information will be available for you. All right. Uh, then let me go back to the service. So here I have the service and uh, under this events, you should be able to see any events that AWS has planned, like any instance uh, retirement or any instance reboots that AWS has planned. All that events will be available over here, all right? Now, how do you launch your EC2 instance? Now, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. One is you can go to the EC2 dashboard and here you will see this launch instance option. And the other option you have is you can go to this instances and from here also you will see launch instances now as of now we don't have any instances so basically uh, i don't i'm not running any instances so to create your instances your virtual machines you can click on this launch instances and this will open up a page you can where you can start filling in the details now what are details you will give so this is same as you know uh, any machine so you will basically select your Operating system, which is your AMI. So AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image, which specifies the operating system you want. Then it specifies your instance type, which is the CPU core, the memory capacity, your key pair for your login information, your network settings, your storage. So you'll have to basically fill in all these details. So let's quickly uh, fill in these details. As of now, most of the values I'll go with the default ones. Uh, in the upcoming sessions, we will be talking about each of these uh, in detail, so you'll get a better understanding of this. But for now, we're just looking at how you can launch an EC2 instance. So let's call this as example server. Now, this is a tag. 
Now, what is a tag? Tag is simply a metadata. So we can make use of these tags to provide any additional information about the servers. Now, I'll tell you why this is important uh, um, uh, when you're working with multiple instances. So let's say you have 10 instances, all right? Now, if you don't uh, name your servers, it can be very difficult for us to know which server is, is for what purpose. So let's say you have one server for Java application, you have one server for Python application, you have one server for Node.js application. How do you differentiate? Now, one way is obviously you can log into that server, but I cannot do that always, right? So that's why I can make use of these tags and I can name that server. Tell you, okay, this is my Python application server. This is my Java application server. So that is where we can make use of your tags. Then we have your AMI. So once again, AMI is nothing but your operating system. So here you can choose what operating system you want for the virtual machine. So you want Amazon Linux, Mac OS, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, uh, SUSE Linux. So basically what operating system you want. In our case, we are going with this uh, Amazon Linux and make sure whatever the AMI that you're selecting, you see this free tire eligible. Uh, not all the AMIs are free to use. So here, for example, if you see these AMIs does not have a free tire eligible tag to it. That means you'll have to pay money for using these AMIs. So just to avoid the cost, any AMIs that you're selecting, make sure you have this free tire eligible so that you don't pay any money. And here you have the architecture. So you want whether you want to use the ARM or you want to use the Intel. So in our case, we're going with the default one. Then comes your instance type. Now by default, you will have this t2.micro, which gives you one CPU core and one GB RAM. And again here, make sure you're going with this free trial eligible. Not all the instance types are uh, free. Depending on the instance type that you're going to select, you may get charged, all right? So once again, when you come to this section, make sure it is t2.micro, make sure it is showing this free tire eligible. If not, you will get charged for this. Next, we have your uh, key pairs. So I spoke a bit about this under the features of your EC2, which is in the last session. So key pairs are your login information. So if you want to log into your instances, we make use of your key pair for the authentication. EC2 instances by default does not support password authentication. So to begin with this, you will need to create a new key pair. So to create your key pair, you can click on this create new key pair and you can start filling in the details. So you can give a name to this. Let's call this as example server and what algorithm you want to use for the key pair. So this key pair, it consists of a, a public key and a private key. All right. So whether you're going with this RSA or this ED25519, we'll have a public key and a private key associated with it. So let's say we'll go with RSA and what is the private key file format you want. Now, depending on how you are going to connect to this server, if you're going to use OpenSSH command, we'll be using this .pem file for the authentication. And if you're using this PuTTY tool, we'll be using this .ppk file. Uh, in the upcoming sessions, uh, I'll be showing you how you can use these files. But in our case, we are going with this uh, .pem file. Right? So this becomes our private key. And then when you click on create private key, this will create a key pair for us and a private key will be downloaded for us. So here you should be able to see a private key. So if you see a file with the extension .pem, it's a private key. All right. So that is what we will be using to connect to the server. So in the next session, I'll be showing you how you can use that. And as for your network settings, we are going with the default one. So this will be default uh, network subnet will be default uh, auto assign uh, public IP is enabled. So we will be talking about your VPC in a separate session. But for now, we are going with the default settings that we have. And then uh, create a security group. So we'll edit this. Now, this is important. All right. So security group is your firewall. All right. So this is what will control whether we can connect to the server or not. Okay. So let's give it a name. So let's call this as example server security group. And we'll add a description to this and what traffic you want to allow. So for now, we are only going to allow SSH because this is a Linux machine. If it's a Windows machine, we will be using RDP. So we'll talk about that later on. But for now, we are going to allow SSH, which is your TCP protocol. By default, the port number is 22. And then the source. So source would be from where do you want to allow the SSH connectivity. So you have three options, anywhere, custom, my IP. For now, we are going with anywhere. We'll, uh, I'll tell about the other options later on. So anywhere is open to any network. So here, if you see, it says 
0 0.0.0.0.0 slash 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is any network. That means I can connect to this server from any network I want. Okay, so for now we are going with this option and then comes your storage. So by default, you will get 8 GB of storage capacity. That's basically a hard disk. All right. So again, we are going with the default. There are a few more options. We can talk about that later on. And then your number of instances, how many instances you want. So you can give 1, 2, 3, 4, any number of instances. And once you're okay with everything, you'll just click on launch instance, which will start launching the instance for us. Now, again, in this case, most of the things we are going with the default ones. We will be talking about each of these in details in the upcoming sessions. So once you're done filling in these details, just click on launch instance and this will start launching the virtual machine for us. So here, whatever we have configured, whatever the details we have given, a machine will be launched for us. So here, if I go to view all instances, I should be able to see the instance coming up over here. All right. So here, this instance is being launched for me. So the instance state, as of now, this is not in the pending state. Uh, so this is the first state you will see. That means the server is being prepared. Once the server is ready, this will transition to running. That means the server is ready to use. So this will take a few seconds or a few minutes in case of Windows machine. And once it transitions to the running status, you can start connecting to the server. This is your instance ID. So every time you launch an instance, AWS will assign a unique ID to it. So this is the instance ID. That's your state. This is the instance type, which is a deep dot micro in which availability zone your instance is running. Then you have the public DNS, public IP. So all these information will be available for you. And here also you can see that's your instance ID, the public IP address, the private IP address, the DNS, the status, instance type, which AMI you have used, what is the key pair, when this server was launched, all these details will be available for you. And uh, the next tab is for your security groups. So which security group is attached to this instance? What is the rule that you have allowed? Uh, under networking, you should be able to see the details about your network. Under storage, you can see your storage capacity. So all these informations will be available for you. And this is how you can launch your EC2 instance. So now my EC2 instance is up and running. So like this, if I want to launch uh, uh, multiple instances, I can go ahead and launch multiple instances for different different use cases. All right. So this is generally how we use your EC2 instances to launch our virtual machines. And once our virtual machines is running, we can use that to host and deploy our applications. In the next session, I'll show you how you can connect to this instance. So I'll show you both uh, how you can connect using the SSH command and also how you can use the PuTTY tool to connect to this uh, Linux EC2 instance. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.